Got your first liquid culture syringe and excited to begin growing your own mushrooms, but you are unsure what to do next? Stay tuned and I will walk you through the basic steps to colonizing a petri dish to ensure clean, healthy growth and maximize your success. I'm Chris McDonald with FNC Mushroom Company and I believe it all starts here. Whether you have a flow hood or a still air box, every bit of lab work starts with you being clean before entering your lab. First, I make sure to brush and floss my teeth, followed by a refreshing mouthwash. Then I move into clipping my nails before taking a shower. I always make sure to scrub from top to bottom before putting on fresh clean clothes. Before I enter my lab area, I put on my lab shoes and once inside I put on gloves and a face mask. As far as bandana and lab coat go, they are both optional, but I have found them both to be helpful. Now that we have ourselves ready for clean lab work, it is time to prepare our work area. I start off with running my flow hood so that it may scrub the air while I'm cleaning. I prefer to have my flow hood run for at least 20 minutes before doing any actual work to ensure the air is as clean as possible. And to clean, wipe everything down with 70% rubbing alcohol, starting with the bottle I'll be using and then wiping all the surfaces. When setting up my workspace, I like to populate the area first from left to right to reduce crossing objects in front of each other in the airstream. This will allow me to have a clean workflow when it's time to colonize our plate. Heads up, rubbing alcohol can completely remove ink from labels and petri dishes. Applying a small strip of packing tape to my syringes helps to preserve the labels. I also like to reduce the time I pick up tools as they may need to be cleaned before intervals. This is why I pre-cut my parafilm. However, I keep the box in the airstream in case I need another strip. By doing it this way, I reduce the need to pick up or clean a tool more than necessary. Keep in mind, you will get better at your lab work with every iteration. Even in making this video, I found a few spots I can improve. I am always looking to be just a little better than last time. and if you have any suggestions on how I can further improve, please leave a comment below. I love talking with my community. All right, we are just about ready to use our syringe. I like to clean the most important things last to ensure that they are the cleanest I can get them. For me, there is a rhythm when doing lab work I find both relaxing and engaging. To help my workflow stay consistent, I sing a jingle in my head. It goes, hands, plate, shake, needle, flame, plates, hands, tape. Third to clean your hands with 70% rubbing alcohol. Then unwrap your plates to be colonized. Flame plates, hands tape, hands plates, shape needle, flame plates, hands tape. Prepare your needle by bending the tabs over and slightly separating the sleeve to expose the needle base to the clean airflow. Look to ensure your culture is evenly dispersed and contamination free. When you are satisfied with the results, take off the syringe cover and place it to the side within the clean airflow. Or if in a still air box, a designated clean area. Secure the needle to the syringe and remove the cap. I prefer to light my flame before uncapping my needle, so I'm ready to move it right into the flame once uncapped. If this is your first time using a needle, it can be a little intimidating. Remember to point the needle away from you perpendicularly and gently separate the cap only enough to release the tension. Once the cap is loose, it can be easily slid off. A word of warning, if you use too much force or hold the needle parallel to your body when separating, there is a good chance you could poke yourself. Take my word for it. When introducing your needle to the flame, point your needle upwards at a 45 degree angle and heat the stem starting at the base until it glows. Once sterilized, immediately move the needle into the clean airflow and let it cool for a second before dispensing. I like to squirt a little into a waste bucket before dispensing onto my plates. This is because the plungers tend to stick over time or there could be a particularly large mass in the syringe that can clog the needle. I have had cultures shoot out hard enough to bounce out of a plate. Quickly add two drops of culture and cover the plate. Ideally, it is recommended to open your plates only enough to insert your needle to dispense without the needle touching anything. Do it by opening the lid as if hinged like a clamshell into the airflow. I took the lids off here so you can see what I'm doing. 
If you do take the lids off, place them to the side with the opening down. I prefer to recap my needle for storage as soon as I'm finished dispensing because reducing exposure time is another key factor for reducing contamination. Now I clean my hands one more time before wrapping the plates with parafilm. Here we are only doing two plates, but eventually you may be doing a full stack of plates at a time and cleaning your hands one last time before wrapping them is one last stopgap to ensure you have not absently minded touched something unclean. I like to start wrapping my plates by securing one edge of parafilm with a thumb and gently stretch the film so that the seam of the lid will be completely covered when done wrapping. Adjust your grip as needed to firmly hold the dish, taking care not to squeeze too hard and create cracks in your dish. I like to label my plates with the mushroom name, date colonized, lot number, and which generation of plate I'm working with. All right, it has been a couple days in the dark at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 degrees Celsius, and it is time to inspect our plates for growth. Hopefully, if I did my job right, the plate will have colonized little without any competitors. Looks like I've done a good job so far. With only a little growth, I am fairly confident I've succeeded. If there were any competitors growing, they would be showing up as dark spots or some kind of discoloration. As these plates colonize and the mycelial mat establishes, a visual inspection on both sides of the plates ensures no hidden contamination. I had colonized these other plates while making this video, but they are not showing any signs of growth. And this does not mean they're not growing. Rather, this is likely the result of too little culture being applied to the plate. And this culture may need time to establish how to grow on a new medium. In this case, these plates are made with potato dextrose and is likely a different food source than what they were cultured in, which was, if I had to guess, malt extract or honey water. The introduction of a new food source has the potential to slow initial growth, at least until the mycelium has figured out how to digest the new nutrient. Here the plates are eight days later, and you can see some signs of growth on all of the plates. The growth is slower than normal, and I am attributing it to the new food source. I have grown these same species out on malt extract agar with fast results. I just happen to have some spare potato agar plates available when making this video. These were spare plates I ended up not needing and just left them to colonize. You can see how well the parafilm works at securing the lid without suffocating the culture. Even with the overgrowth, the culture has not escaped the plate. Not to say that it can't, because it definitely can and will with enough time. Now, I personally would not use these in a commercial production run as they are old and likely will not grow as vigorous as a young specimen, but would have no issue using it for personal consumption. Just remember, if your initial culture is old, it may not grow as fast and it will be more susceptible to contamination as you expand the mycelium. All right. Once the plate is nearly fully colonized and free of contamination, it is time to move on to the next phase, which is either grain spawn or liquid culture, or perhaps both, depending on your needs. I hope this was helpful for you, and I thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video where I explain how I make grain spawn.